Right winger Bill Maher, Bill Maher, <laughs> right winger Bill Maher compares woke American left to Mao's cultural revolution. Look at that. Oh yeah, he's he uh, an alleged liberal. I'm telling you guys, the difference right now is that the Democrats are no longer liberals; they are communists. Okay, he is a liberal. Liberals belong on the Republican Party because we're about freedom now, right? And they're not. They're about suppressing free speech. They're about uh, silencing dissent. Yeah. Bill Maher is a liberal, but every once in a while he gets something right. On his HBO show this weekend, he compared today's woke left to Mao's cultural revolution in Panda Land, which punished people for wrong think, shamed people publicly, and forced people to be re-educated. When you look at how radical higher education in America has become, this comparison makes a lot of sense. It's out of, de out of deadline. Since Panda Land has much was much on Bill Maher's mind on this week's edition of HBO's Real Time. His first mention came during the opening monologue when he talked about people freaking out over the panda spy balloon in Montana. But Mayer turned serious during his new rules editorial noting how the woke are trying to reinvent the very nature of human beings. He talked about the Red Guard movement in Pandaland where people would attack those accused of not towing the ideological line making them wear dunce caps and publicly shaming them. Such tactics, Mayer said, were an attempt to change things by screaming at it. A problem then and now again, becoming more and more a fact of life here in the U.S. To illustrate that, Mayer cited the story of Jason Kilborn, a University of Illinois Chicago School of Law professor accused of engaging in behaviors that made some students of color feel uncomfortable. On an exam, he alluded to two racial slurs in a hypothetical question on a black female worker suing an employer. Complaints ensued, and he was banned from campus and had to undergo sensitivity training and write five self-reflective essays. Bunch of softies, man. That was the modern version of what the Red Guard was doing. If you can't see the similarities between Kilborn and that, the person who needs re-education re is you, says Mayer. Oh, he said it strong, guys. Mayer is so close to figuring out that the left are the authoritarians. He is still a DT hating liberal, but he deserves credit when he gets something right. Here you go, guys. And finally, new rule. If you're part of today's woke revolution, you need to study the part of revolutions where they spin out of control because the revolutionaries get so drunk on their own purifying elixir they imagine they can reinvent the very nature of human beings. <clears throat> communists, communists thought selfishness, selfishness could be cast out of human nature. Russian revolutionaries spoke of the new Soviet man who wasn't motivated by self-interest, but instead wanted to be part of a collective. No, it turns out he wanted to be on a yacht in a Gucci tracksuit holding a vodka and a prostitute. <laughs> not standing in line all day for a potato. <laughs> the problem with communism and with some very recent ideologies here at home is that they think you can change reality by screaming at it, that you can bend human nature by holding your breath, but that's the difference between reality and your mommy. <laughs> Lincoln once said that you can repeal all past history, but you still cannot repeal human nature. But he's canceled now, so fuck him. <laughs> Yesterday I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you have? Because, again, in China, we saw how a revolutionary thought he could do a page one rewrite of humans. Mao ordered his citizens to throw off the four olds, old thinking, old culture, old customs, and old habits. So um, your whole life went in the garbage overnight, no biggie. And those who resisted were attacked by an army of purifiers called the Red Guard, who went around the country putting dunce caps on people. Yeah, who didn't take to being a new kind of mortal being. A lot of pointing and shaming went on. Oh, and about a million dead. 
and the only way to survive was to plead insanity for the crime of being insufficiently radical, then apologize and thank the state for the chance to see what a piece of shit you are, and of course submit to re-education, or as we call it here in America, freshman orientation. Listen to this story. There's a law professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago, named Jason Kilborn, whose crime was that on one of his exams, he used a hypothetical case. Okay, I already read that thing. Anyways, uh, guys, remember, we got six channels, links in the description. Subscribe to the ones you want, ring the bell for notifications. If you're on this side, same thing. Six channels in the description, separated by subject matter. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's see. Now we have Commander Jack Murphy. I never had a horse with a feline name. Even my Welsh pony as a child was Babe. Pony was a meal. Poor baby. All those kids have to be re-educated quickly. Yeah. Uh, anyways, comments on this side. Uh, my horse's name was Martini. Cool. I used to, I used to have Martini, Abrams, and Sheha. Dummy crats are commies now. Yes, they are. Um, anyways, is he in the Red Shoe Club? Yes, he is. 